This is Gang Lee, one of the leaders of Building Smart International IDM Turkey project. I've learned that many people had a hard time understanding the top-level relationships between information delivery manual, use case, exchange requirement, and model view definition. I'll explain the relationships using animated slides today. The first part of this video is prepared for the ones who are not familiar with the IDM concepts. If you already know IDM elements and concepts well, defined in ISO 29481-1, you can skip the first few minutes of this video. ISO 29481 Part 1 is the international standard that defines how to specify information requirements for specific information use cases. The standard is referred to as the Information Delivery Manual, IDM. An information requirement is re referred to as an exchange requirement, ER, which is the same thing as the exchange information requirements, EIR, in ISO 19650. An information use case or an information exchange scenario is referred to as a process map, PM. An IDM has a corresponding MVD. An IDM, PMs, and ERs have a head header. A header includes a set of information about each document, such as the aim and scope, authors, revision history, language, version, and others. This set of information about a document is referred to as a metadata set. In a new proposal for ISO 29481 Part 3, IDM Schema, the header information is aggregated as a use case reflecting the recent growth of the interest and the use case community in the AEC industry. What is an IDM? IDM, IDM can be understood as a wrapper of use cases, process maps, and exchange requirements. An IDM can be viewed also as a folder. A use case can be viewed as a folder label, which describes the contents and the history of the materials in the folder. Process map and exchange requirements are the contents of the folder. To make a new folder, a folder must have a label. By the same token, a use case must be defined to have a new IDM. So I'll draw a thick line between an IDM and a UC to denote that an UC is a mandatory for an IDM. Please also note that there can be only one UC at the top level uh, or on the uh, cover, although we may have multiple use cases in the folder. It would be awkward and confusing to have multiple labels on the cover of a folder. So we should not have multiple use cases for one IDM at, at the top level, not um, at a lower level. ERs and PMs can be added later, so I'll use the dotted lines to represent optional relationships between IDM, ER, and PM. When you specify an IDM, there may not be an MVD corresponding to your IDM. To allow an MVD to be linked to an IDM later, the relationship between an IDM and an MVD is defined as optional. A use case can have multiple sub-use cases, and an exchange requirements can be composed of many exchange requirements. But at the top level, an IDM will be associated with only one large exchange requirement, 
which is the union of the all the sub exchange requirements. So the relationship between an ER and an IDM at the top level is one to one. Similarly, an MVD can be composed of many sub MVDs or micro MVDs. But at the top level, there must be only one MVD that is associated with an IDM. However, the relationship between IDM and PMs is different because the same set of information can be used in various ways. Um, so the relationship between an IDM and PMs is one to many. Let's take a look at uh, this issue with slightly different examples. Let's take a look at the relationship between ER and MVD at the top level first. An MVD may encompass or support several ERs and so may be used to validate many different use cases. The union of ERs forms another ER. For example, the union of ERs 1, 2, and 3 can be grouped as ER4. The union of ERs 1 and 2 can be grouped as ER5. If you separate MVD1 from MVD2, at the top level, the relationship between MVD and ER is one-to-one, -one, no matter how many ERs are associated with an MVD at, at a lower level. For example, there must be only one ER that is equivalent to the coordination view CV MVD, regardless of how many subset ERs um, that the uh, CV MVD can support. Let's look at the relationship between IDM and use case at the top level. Each IDM has a use case, possibly with several different ways, uh, process maps, different process maps, of exchanging and sharing information. An IDM may support several variations of the top-level use case or elaborated use cases. Regardless of how many different ways of using information is supported by an IDM, the IDM must have one set of aim and scope, which is use case at the top level. Use case and ER at the top level. A process map has multiple data objects. A data object may be associated with one or more ERs. Conversely, an ER may be associated with many data objects and multiple process maps. The relationship between an IDM <coughs> The relationship between an IDM and an ER at the top level is also one-to-one -one without an UC. IDM, UC, ER, and MVD at the top level. If you put these things together, we can conclude that an IDM must have one UC, one ER, and one MVD at the top level regardless of how many variations of use cases or subsets of ERs are supported by an MVD and also by an IDM. For example, there must be one IDM specification for coordination view, CV MVD, and the CV IDM specification must have one full set of ERs at the top level. And there must be one top level or high level use case definition for the coordination view MVD, regardless of how many variations of the use cases that the um, coordination view MVD supports. Finally, this is how the relations between IDM, use case, exchange requirement, and model view definition are implemented in the current version of the IDM schema. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that this video was helpful understanding the relationships between IDM, UC, ER, and MVD.